Okay, YouTube, here are 10 black metal albums I think guitarists should listen to. Um, these are albums that have inspired me, and I didn't want to include some of the obvious albums like Demisteries and Burzum's Philosopher and Transylvanian Hunger, you know, all the Immortal albums. Nah, let's do something a little bit different. Um, but I will give some honorable mentions. First, door, first of all, to Anthems. Oh, you already can see the screen reflection instead of the, <laughs> instead of the album cover. But yeah, everyone knows the Emperor Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. I don't even know how it's pronounced properly. But yeah, top album. And of course, Dissections of Somber Lane. Um, now that the obvious stuff is out of the way, the last honorable mention, it would be included in my list, um, is either of the Merck Skog albums. Norwegian band made from members of Zyklon. Well, Z Zyklon before Zyklon. Um, yeah, really, really fucking intense, frantic music. It's almost like, um, it's almost like 1349, but more death metal. Just as aggressive, just as intense, just as, just as amazing, crazy drumming. So, um, there's not really much of an order to this. So, first on my list is Suda's Desert Northern Hell. Like, I got this album when I was, was 16. And, oh yeah, it just fucking blew my mind. It was so aggressive, so angry, so powerful, full of, full of, full of really cool riffs. Um, like, yeah, like, cool, when it starts off. That's just a fucking top tune. Really, really good song. Um, and then when, you know, in the latter half of the album, with Mouth of Madness, just that seven minute song of perfect flow perfect progression to the songwriting, every riff being really, really catchy, yeah, that was just a really, really good album to um, to listen to, and even learning some of those songs and some of those riffs, with the way the times work, especially in uh, Mouth of Madness, and Ghoul with the um, arpeggiated, uh, not, not, well, almost arpeggiated, augmented riff with the hammer-ons and stuff, you know, good, nice little bit of technicality to add to um, your songwriting. Next on the list is by my favourite band from the UK, Not Cradle of Filth, a band, I can't even see it properly. So a band called Verdelet, spelled V-E-R-D-E-L-E-T, or Verdelet, I again, I don't know the pronunciation. Um, I'm good friends with these guys, but that's not me shouting them out, or kind of, I am. But also, I think they're incredible songwriters, and the way they write their riffs and all their songs, is is like all the good bits of Gorgoroth and Behexen smashed into um, a song, which is fantastic. So this is the Lights of the Old World EP. And I'm not sure if you could buy this on physical CD anymore. I'm not even sure if it's on Spotify. But I know the songs are definitely on YouTube. And uh, yeah, big, big shout out to those guys. <clears throat> um, good band to gig with as well if you're on the UK black metal circuit. Next on the list is Ascension, their Con Consolamentum album. Right, fucking black metal and unpronounceable names, right? This is an interesting album because it's so atmospheric, but so technical, and in some parts really, really groovy. Um, the way they've done it is interesting because the the intro the intro to that album is almost like a it's almost like a melodic death metal kind of kind of thing you know with the eighth notes and the um, and the low note and you know a pedal note dead 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 I don't know check it out for yourself and the way the notes work is almost like the uplifting to evil riff style of riff but it's in a way where everything is far more ominous than, than how dissection would do it, for example, it's a lot more, it's a lot more dark, a lot more evil. Um, yeah, I think this album has pretty good flow as well. Like most of the tracks on here are really, really cool. I think um, the big standout song on this one, "Grey Light Sibling." That's probably that's probably my favourite one on there, which is the opening track of the album, just because it, it hits the hardest. It's like um. It's almost like a note on a thrack in a way, but instead of the grindcore elements, it's a more kind of evilly, 
evil, ominous, and a bit more honest kind of sound. Like it's honestly evil. It sounds not a lot less forced. It's like um, there's a stronger sense of, of, of being, and, and the music knows what it's about. Cool. So next on the list, Asmodeus's Imperium Damnatum. There we go. This is the album. I'm trying to get it without all the screen reflection. And uh, yeah, this is a really, really brutal album. I discovered these guys when I was like 16, oh no, 17 or 18, and I was like, holy crap, I need to get the album. Um, it's like Belphegor, but more evil, but just, just as fast, and I'll say even harder hitting than Belphegor, because Belphegor, Belphegor are cool, but they were of kind of samey, <clears throat> and not, not as evil as they could be. Good band, just... I don't know, not, not exa exactly to my taste, but these guys, yeah, yeah, it's way more, way more enticing to me, a lot more sinister to the riffs, it's like, um, it's like sethereal, but darker, much darker, uh, and faster, and, and more brutal, it's just, it's just such a, a frantic, well not frantic, but it's just a powerful album, it's like in their opening song, um, no, the second song, Decretum, <clears throat> Decretum Execution Executionist? I don't know, it's probably Latin or something. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I just hate cut. So it, that, that song has a way to make one chord sound intense and interesting uh, purely because of the drumming behind it and the way the vocals work. Um, and it's just so, just so intense. It's so intense, it kind of, it's gripping, it's so gripping. The intensity is gripping, and it's not, it's not one of those songs where it's so similar that it gets kind of boring. No, it still, it still manages to stay fresh throughout the whole song. I'll say, like, as an album, the album's pretty good. Um, but it's really that second song, and, um... I think of the other ones, it's been so long since so I listened to it. Ah, yes, it's the second song on the album and the second last song, Withering Vengeance. Those are extremely, extremely powerful, powerful, um, powerful songs. Here's one we're putting, think of it as ethereal, but kind of darker, and, but with like dark funeral bits thrown into it, but without the kind of, I don't want to say cheesy, yeah, Sethereal and Dark Funeral, but not as... But the kind of catchiness from Dark Funeral is replaced with more sinister guitar tones. And it's actually a bit more brutal than Dark Funeral. Probably because these guys play in lower tunings and... Um, the, the way they construct their minor chords is slightly different to Dark Funeral, because Dark Funeral used a normal minor triad root, third, fifth. These guys use the fifth root third kind of thing so it's just that tiny bit tiny bit more well, it's actually a lot more demented than dark funeral speaking of demented fucking hell funeral mist salvation this is like using all the this is like turning the church against itself because it's really interesting because some of some of the riffs and the way um the songs are crafted on this are using core harmonies like fourth harmonies and Using them in black metal is just so. I, I, I just like that concept of using the the ideas that the church or the musical ideas that the church uses is being used in the same way but with black metal and making it really, really evil. Um, standout song from this album, "Breathing Wounds." That's a top, top tune. Um, and across the uh, clip hop, yeah, yeah, those are, those are bangers. Um, interesting fact about this album, the guy who plays drums does the production and the recording for every Vartain album and a few other bands in the Swedish metal scene and, and even around the world, uh, Necromorbus Studios. Necromorbus is this drummer and it's the current Marduk singer. This was his solo, this was his project before Marduk and this fucking beats anything that Marduk, that Marduk has done. Marduk just writes the same song over and over and over again. This is... Just so much more interesting to listen to and filthier. It's so filthy. The guitar tone, the drums, 
It's a lot more interesting than Marduk. Not catchy, not catchy as not as catchy as Marduk, but far more filthy and even more like even more violent in some ways. Purely because Necromorbus hits so hard, you can feel that. Whereas um, with the Marduk albums, you know the drums gotta think about consistency as opposed to just really fucking going at it. Nah. Funeral Miss and Necromorbus really really do really do so much better than anything Marduk have done, in my opinion. Um, next on the list is Pseudo God's Death Womb Catechesis, or however it's pronounced. Yeah, Catechesis, I don't know. Brutal, brutal album. One of my favorites. I remember um, finding out about these guys in um, in uni. My friend showed me them, and I was totally blown away because this is just relentless. Every song is just fine. Bam, 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 bam. But it's not, but it, every song is distinct as well, which was, makes it such a fantastic album. Every song has its own personality, but still keeping to the pseudo god songwriting style and recipe. Um, Oh man, I could recommend any any song on this album, but my favorite is probably got to be um, favorites Malignant Spears, which is the second song, and uh, Azazel, which is the fourth. But yeah, this is um, good, very 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 good, um, and catchy as well, catchy but like evil catchy, if that's the thing, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's all just power chords, but it's just the way they write their riffs and the grooves that they use and um, the way they accent certain parts of the riff. I think it's really, really, really good. So now, how many we got? Got five albums left. Okay, cool. This is Dark Space's album, Dark Space Three. Now, Dark Space. Well, this is one I, I was debating whether to put on this list. But I decided to do it anyway, purely because Dark Space riffs are, in principle, really, really, really simple. But it's the consistency of the songwriting, being able to remember it, that makes them so good. Um, and, uh, and also their tone, like, <laughs> it's thick, it's frantic, it's not frantic, it's just a thick, 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 heavy guitar tone. Um, that you just don't get from anything, and the mix to most people is actually terrible. The drums are programmed, <laughs> the drums are programmed, and they're so low in the mix, and the guitars are so high um, to the point where the guitars drown everything else out. So it's really just, drown, um, really just guitars and vocals, but it's almost hollow. The atmosphere, um, it's almost confusing. In a way, but the stability is in the rhythms that the Dark Space use. You know, even if there's one song in here, um, 3.16, it's two chords, but the rhythm in the intro is so cool that it just sticks and it doesn't lose anything. It doesn't lose anything. Um, 3.12 from the album is the catchiest, um, probably the most accessible of all the Dark Space songs. But um, yeah, if you want to. If you want to make one chord sound really, really cool and heavy, but make it a bit more bleak than Asmodeus's methods, Dark Space is definitely one to check out. Um, this is the Dreaming Eye by Atlas, A K H L Y S. Um, this is Nightbringer's singer's solo band, one of his like million projects, and this is inspired by all of his like night terrors and mental health issues if, if he has any i don't know if he has night terrors and fucking i don't know some kind of next level depression or some weird kind of thing going on um yeah this is like a, a this is like sleep paralysis um into music everything is claustrophobic chaotic but also really technical as well, because you get like really cool single note lead lines with really interesting harmonies and stuff. Almost like Nightbringer, but but it's a bit more kind of bleak, way more bleak uh, than Nightbringer, and a bit more unsettling than Nightbringer's music. Um, one to check out, I think. What's that song? Tides of Wanderic Darkness, or Owneric Dark. I don't know. The second song on this album. Hell yeah. 
that's a fucking tune. So now we get to um, three of my top black metal albums ever. One of which being, I think this is one of the greatest black metal albums ever, The Hexams by the Blessing of Satan. Um, I, rate, I rate albums by their by their ability of, to keep me interested from one song to the other, and there's only one other album that does that, which I'll get to towards the end. Um, but The Hexams by the Blessing of Satan, oh man, I think every song on here is crafted perfectly to work well with each other. The production is, oh my god, the production is so gritty and filthy. You know, the bass is turned up high, you know, fuck's sake, bass is turned high in black metal. You know, the guitar tone is thin, so that works out, works with the bass as well. Um, the drumming's sloppy, but for some reason it's just the conviction and the execution and the way it's recorded that everything kind of works. Um, yeah, I think that's what makes it so good. And the way the riffs, the way the, the, way the riffs work as well, um, you know, if you can keep it catchy, intense, and melodic all at the same time, but then know when to make it evil. Yeah, you know, it's a shame. It's a shame the Hexen don't have this guitarist anymore. I can't remember his name. Triumphator, maybe. I don't know. Uh, you could look it up on the Metal Archives of the, um, you know, the lineup for this album. But holy crap, the Hexes by the Blessing of Satan. You haven't listened to this already? Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Get on it! Get on it! You're just gonna be kicking the fucking cunt, man. Beautiful, beautiful album. So now we get on to, um, this is where it gets a really kind of, kind of musical in a way, because these, these are all musical, these are all really cool, they have really cool ideas, but I think these two albums do it, do it best, first of which is Nightbringer's Terra Damnata, so all of Emperor's kind of counter harmonies and counter melodies that they use is, is also used in Nightbringer's songwriting. But what Nightbringer do is almost is orchestrate um, their guitars. So one guitar's playing one thing, one guitar's playing another, and then somewhere out of nowhere, not, they've got like a third or fourth guitar line that's recorded, which I think is really, 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 really cool. Every song is frantic, intense, brutal. Everything, everything I look for in black metal: evil, dark, misanthropic, you know, melancholic. It's just great. It's great. You know, every every song in here is really, really good. I've listened to this album so many times. Uh, I got it when it first came out. I was like, "Holy crap!" and just almost had it on repeat for a very long time. Um, I would say the third song. Uh, I can't remember which one it is because the order's fine. It's been ages since I listened to it. But the third song in here, fucking great. And the last one, Serpent Sun, absolutely wonderful. Um, and it's interesting as well because Nightbringer, you have been using seven strings now for a while, but I think these these um, songs utilize. The lower, the lower range of seven strings, as well as the higher ranges, um, as well. Because what they tend to do is write a really, really low heavy riff, or and, or have a single note lead line that's really low, you know, and then at the same time have one that's really high, and that's that contrast is, is fantastic. Um, Songwriting wise, the flow is perfect. Every song just flows fantastically. Nothing's jarring. Nothing feels out of place. It's just a really, really bloody good album. Um, one worth checking out, one worth checking out, and even learning, um, oh, I've tried learning some of the stuff, but there's just so much going on that I can't even figure out some bits, um, it's not like there's tabs on Nightbringer songs anyway, um, so yeah, Terra Damnata by Nightbringer is a top album, and I'll say Death in the Black Work is another good one, but this one's a bit more guitar focused, um, a bit more technical, um, a far more frantic, um, People these days, if you're first getting into black metal, or have been listening to black metal for a while, if you've really listened to Death and the Black Work, but not this one, yeah, Terra Damnata, um, that's probably good. So, um, it's interesting, one of my rules for this, um, for this list would be to use, uh, you know, one album per band, and I've tried to, uh, I've tried to stick to it, but it kind of... Well, you know, put it like this: if I if I had if I were to pick, you know, three albums for like the best kind of black metal playing, I'd pick this one band um, and three of their albums, you know. But I thought, you know, I thought the one that was most important to me and um, inspired me inspired me the most, and that is um, 1349's Demon War. Now, there's a little bit of story to this because I was just 
I just found out about 30, 49, I was 15, 14, 15? I think 14. It was 14 or 15, I can't remember. I think 15. I don't know, 2010. I was turning 50, yes, yes. Just after, just after I turned 15, I got this album, and I've been listening to 1349, a couple of their tracks on YouTube at the time. Um, I really like Sculptor of Flesh, and that's probably everyone's first 1349 song. And I checked out some of the other songs, which were really cool by them. And then I saw this album in, in some random HMV um, in a local store, and I was like, what? What's this doing here? Because, you know, if you remember, it, if you're from, I don't know, but if you're, if you're from London and you used to go to HM, HMV about 10 years ago, if you were a local one, you'd barely find any black or death metal albums, and it was just all full of like fucking suicide silence and uh, uh, all the all that shit. Um, so 1349 was a big surprise at the time, and um, I don't know. I was with my mum, and I was like, "Mum, can you get me this?" Like, yeah, cool. So this was my first black metal album, and I listened to it, and I didn't like it too much at first, um, which is surprising because I just didn't understand it at the time. But when you get Oh, I listened to it like a year and a bit later because um, I booked I booked tickets to see 1349 um, at the Underworld in 2011, and I said, oh, okay, I'm gonna listen to them again, and I was just like, whoa, whoa, something clicked that time, um, and yeah. So what makes 1349 so interesting and so good for the guitar players is because of the amount of guitar techniques that they use. Um, everything, everything's used. Um, and the way they craft the riffs, going from one chord to the other, with weird, with times, with accenting, um, is crazy. And Archeon, the guitarist, he was explaining his guitar playing being um, controlled chaos, and that's really what every 1349 album is. It's it's really chaotic, frantic, quick technical guitar work with chords, single note lines, evil riffs. Um, everything, everything, hammer-ons, pull-offs, hard rhythms in the right hand, um, proper, proper endurance and technical, um, technical playing. Um, all of it's in 1349 albums. Um, Beyond the Apocalypse is a really, really good one. Uh, Massive Cold from the Chaos and even um, Hellfire that everyone loves. But this, this is just that little bit more, um, oh, I, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is like Hellfire, but more evil. There's so so much bleakness in this album. It's so dark. Um, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I think this is the, this is like my favorite album ever. Um, and every time I listen to it, I hear something new, something fresh, and that's that's a sign for some of the best albums. Um, top songs of here. Well, I don't think I don't think there's any better black metal song than Pandemonium War Bells. Um, it's not my favourite from the album, which is kind of strange, but it is, for me, um, the best black metal, uh, black, best black metal song, purely because of the way the riffs work, the song flows, and just how everything just, just sucks out all the... Oh, how can I explain it? So in the Harry Potter films, it's like, you know, when the Dementors suck the happiness out of people, this... Just, just sucks out every single bit of. I don't know. It just makes it just drags you into a, a really, really pleasant despair. Like this is that's not a song you want to play, play in a car. Because I remember I put on I put on Pandemonium War Bells in the car um, from a band photo shoot, and everyone just went quiet. It's just this is just not one of those bands that you, this is not that's not one of the songs you want to listen to with people. Um, you know, it's so antisocial, so antisocial. So those are my top 10 black metal albums. Um, please, please um, give me more ideas for videos. I really appreciate it. Um, I decided to do something a bit more f uh, fun and carefree this week rather than a hardcore guitar video. And it, oh shit, this video turned out to be longer than I thought it would. But yeah, cool. So just to go over everything again, <clears throat> from in reverse order, 1349's Demon War. Nightbringer's Terra Damnata, The Hexans by the Blessing of Satan, Atlas the Dreaming Eye, Dark Space 3, Pseudo God, Death Womb, Cater, whatever, Salvation by Funeral Mist, 
Imperium Damnation by Asmodeus or their second album, Consolamentum by Ascension, Vodelay's EP Lights of the Old World, and Suda's Desert Northern Hell. So I hope I hope this provides you with some good listening music and tell me tell me your favourite albums in the comments. Um, I love to hear because I know everything's subjective and everyone has their own uh, musical interests, which is cool. So. Um, next week will be another guitar video. I haven't decided on the topic, but you know, I'll leave that for a surprise. Cool. <laughs>